Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. PSS teachers and staff are recognized for their accomplishments this year. Also tonight, the first batch of COVID vaccines will arrive later than expected. We have the details. And those still waiting on that tax refund check, your check your P.O. box because you may be surprised. In sports, we get a first look at sports for the Marshall Islands Micro Games. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Great customer rep, always willing to go above and beyond for his customers. I truly hope she noticed, she gets noticed at work since I do see she is a hard worker. A food technician that visited my home was great and helpful, thank you. Thank you. You really keep it up. Your customer service is always very good. Awesome customer service with great technicians that are really helpful. Thank you so much, Sherlyn and the Homo Pacific. That's so sweet. <laughs> Feels good to see this kind of messages because, uh, you know, we try our best to do customer service. We make sure that we will 100% uh, resolve the issues. For all those people that are seeking assistance. I just want my customers happy. And help them out each and every day. I would want to go to a place with someone that's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come to Docomo and uh, you'll feel like you're at home. It's gonna look a little different in here. Your favorite spot might not be exactly where it used to be. Being next in line might feel a little less like next in line. And our smells might come with a little extra shine. But McDonald's is ready to take your order as safely as we can. Pacific Rim, KZMI 1039 FM, and Mariana's Variety, in collaboration with nonprofit Empty Vessel Ministry Foundation, are looking to bring Christmas cheer to a deserving family with a Christmas surprise on Saipan. Do you know a local family who has fallen on hard times due to illness, financial difficulties, or other trying circumstances? You can now nominate a family by completing the application at ChristmasSurprise.org. Complete rules are available at ChristmasSurprise.org and on Facebook at CNMI Christmas Surprise. Nomination deadline is November 30th, 2020. Off a day, Turawami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, November 23rd, 2020. One new case of COVID-19 was confirmed over the weekend, bringing the total number of positive COVID-19 cases in the CNMI to 104 since March. According to CHCC, the individual tested positive on the fifth day and was identified through travel screening. The COVID-19 diagnosis source shows the individual originated from a U.S. territory and has been placed into isolated quarantine at Kanoa. Contact tracing has been initiated, which includes passengers on the same flight. It has been 99 days since community transmission in the CNMI. Education month hasn't been the same since the healing of the major typhoons and now the pandemic. But the public school system administration has always made sure their teachers and staff are recognized. Sally Lemus has the story. November is Education Month, which is a time dedicated to recognize everyone who has contributed to the development and success of the local education system. Former Kagman High School principal and today's MC, Leila Staffler, says the 2020 of the year celebration is definitely smaller and different. 
This year's of the year celebration was a little bit more downscaled because of the pandemic. In uh, previous years, we would have large gatherings with all the schools present and all the different um, members of of the years from everywhere to be joining us. But today we had to scale it down. So um, we really focused on just the, the members who were representing their of the year category um, and um, trying to keep the state level celebration as uh, small as possible so that we can follow the COVID guidelines. The of the years recognized this morning were trades and maintenance, administrative staff, instructors, counselors, teacher aides, and teachers from all 20 schools in the CNMI. Also recognized in the ceremony were representatives from the Head Start program and pupil transportation. This event was a lot smaller and so it, it seemed a little bit, you know, uh, more simple, but we were still able to honor and celebrate the of the years for all the schools and the um, programs that uh, represent in the system to, to really honor those people and the hard work and service that they give to the community. This year's state level teacher of the year is Ms. Bonnie Cruz, a fifth grade teacher at Coblerville Elementary School. Cruz has been teaching for six years and being titled as this year's toy has given her a voice to advocate for something she truly believes in, which is mental health. We communicate, we interact with our students every day and a lot of us in educators, we put others first. And I think that's actually a common thing also in the scene of my being brought up in this culture is we're always taking care of other people. And on a daily basis, we're our main focus is our students all day every day and I think we have to be reminded and I'm reminding my colleagues that they need to take care of themselves they need to take care of themselves so that they're able to perform or work at optimal performance for our students Education Commissioner Dr. Alfred Ada is also a strong advocate for mental health Ada says this kind of ceremony is needed now more than ever oh, in any organization rewards and recognition are is very important. A lot of people overlook it as if it's not important or it's recognizing all the hard work, um, especially in this pandemic, in moving forward. It's a combination of teamwork at the school level and at the district level. And um, more so very important this year because it's a pandemic year and a lot of shift that had to take place and um, I, I, I'm, I'm just very proud. I'm very proud of all the uh, nominees first that they step up to the plate and they were recognized by their peers. Educators will continue to celebrate their accomplishments this whole week and the community is very well invited to join in. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Limis. The first batch of vaccines for COVID-19 will be arriving to the CNMI a bit later than anticipated. Initially, the CNMI was scheduled to receive the first batch of the COVID-19 vaccine, Pfizer, by today, November 23rd. According to CHCC CEO Esther Munia, this was to be about 2,000 doses for the healthcare workers and frontliners. But due to the delay in emergency use authorization by the FDA, the arrival of the first batch has been pushed back. In regards to uh, the, um, the tentative uh, date for the 23rd has been uh, moved forward and uh, we will be providing an update. And um, there's no reason uh, that uh, or any difficulty that that's coming short uh, from CNMI. It's uh, it's um, the distribution site that that's uh, holding back. Uh, there's pending uh, emergency use authorization uh, that, that needs to happen with FDA and Pfizer as well as Moderna. So they won't, before they launch uh, the, um, the ship outs, they want to make sure all the, the T's and the dots are, are in place. No new date of receiving the first batch of Pfizer vaccines has been set yet, but Munya says they are currently focusing on getting the data out to the public on the effectiveness of the vaccine. What we're doing right now is, um, as part of our planning, is to get the messaging uh, clear. We want to be transparent. Um, what we hope to get in the next few days are the data that shows the effectiveness 
you know, the efficacy and um, the safety of the vaccine. So we will be definitely be sharing that with the community as well. Um, we will also be, um, you know, making sure again that our, our at least our providers, um, we've already uh, received some interest to, to get vaccinated. And so we can, you know, um, how that, um, I guess they can be our, our, I guess the model to present to others that, you know, of its, uh, to validate it if you've if that's what people want to see of course another part of the discussion about the arrival of Pfizer is the stowage which must be in ultra cold temperatures and Vil Gomez says CHCC will be ready uh, we are uh, coordinating uh, the procurement of um, of um, an ultra cold uh, storage so um, it's it's in it's in its final uh, stage right now uh, we have the equipment um, reserved, so uh, we're coordinating the logistics, but uh, we are gonna be uh, in time to, uh, to have the storage and, and receive uh, the allotment of vaccines from the federal government. For that ultra cold uh, storage would also uh, be sent to Rhoda and Tinian um, as well. When the vaccine does arrive to the CNMI for public distribution, Governor Torres is encouraging everyone to get it to not only protect yourself from COVID-19, but also those around you. First and foremost will be our doctors and nurses and first responders. That is a priority and, and that is a 100% first approach. Um, and I, I know that I was asked and one of it is to also showcase that that the safe the safeguard of or the safety net of taking the vaccine and the pros of getting vaccine. Uh, and so if I was to be asked to take that vaccine, I would be happy to take it as well as my family. Uh, and I hope that this encourages our community, the importance of taking vaccine. Now, you know, again, we can go back and go, go back and forth on the health issues and so forth. But at the end of the day, is COVID, how dangerous is COVID, right? That's at the end of the day, that's the question that we ask ourselves. What is the risk? The Department of Finance has sent out the third batch of tax refund checks in the CNMI. Secretary of Finance David Adelig says about 1,000 people will receive a refund in this round, which was sent out over the weekend and today. About 90% done with our tax refunds for those taxpayers that have their tax returns um, without any errors and are cleared for payment. Um, they are, there are, there are about 500 um, taxpayers re returns that are still under review, whether we need additional documentation or clarifications. So Adelik says if you are due a refund and do not receive it on the third batch to contact the CNMI Department of Finance to get any issues resolved. Public service is not only a job, but a passion. Our Sally Lemus speaks with the two PSS board elect members. Public school officials welcome the two new board members in this morning's recognition ceremony. Maisie Tenori, who grabbed the highest number of votes, talks about her vision for the students. We want to create a system where the students feel seen and they feel heard um, and them and their families and their parents and their guardians feel very empowered to speak up about what they're experiencing, what their needs are and there's an avenue for not only the PSS administration but for the board to hear from them and then to implement some of those concerns and ideas and strategies into policy making. Tenorio, who also heads the NMI Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence, says the policies in the education system should be reviewed. Are they still uh, relevant? Um, do they need to be updated? Are they reflective of what our community and our students are experiencing um, at, this, at this moment? Um, we have just seen so much change over the past few years. Um, our students have experienced so much you know, trauma. Um, they have uh, demonstrated such strong resilience so we want to make sure that our policies are reflective of all of that. Uh, Gregory Borja who grabbed the second seat for the board talks about some priorities he will look at when on board. I don't really have any concrete plans right now what I would like to do is just to work with the school system in terms of uh, financial transparency making sure that what fundings that the school system is getting that it's going to the correct places um, just to work with the current board members and the incoming board uh, 
on what we need to do to ensure student success uh, is something that I would like to work on uh, when it comes to getting back into face to face with the schools you know that's something that I would like to see happen I'd like to see my son go back to campus um, and not just do online learning only um, and because I know that some families struggle with the online learning aspect of it and I think it would just help our community out if we can eventually get back to the campuses. Borja says it's great to have students like the online system learning, but he is also thinking of parents who need their kids back in the classrooms. But then uh, we do have working parents out there, and then when they have elementary age students, it, that's where it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for those parents in terms of trying to help their kids with their online learning, maybe have to go to work, and then just to make sure that their kids are progressing throughout the year leading towards their educational success. So that's one of the reasons I feel that um, going back to school, whether it be half day split sessions or maybe even a track system, just to provide different options in order to keep our students safe, but then to continue the learning so that they can all be successful in school. The term of the board elect members will begin on January 2021. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. Coming up after the break, we have a special segment with the public school system. Stay tuned. Half a day, Sinamai. Did you know that car crashes are the leading cause of death for children ages 1 to 13? In order to keep your children safe during a car crash, make sure you select the right type of car seat for their age and size. A rear-facing car seat should be used from birth to 12 months or up to 3 years old. Forward-facing car seats are for children from 1 to 3 or up to 7 years old. Booster seats are for children from 4 to 7 or up to 12 years old. Seat belts are for children 8 to 12 years old or older. For a seat belt to fit properly, the lap belt must lie snugly across the upper thighs, not the stomach. The shoulder belt should lie snugly across the shoulder and chest and not across the neck or face. Do not move your child to the next car seat level until he or she reaches the top height and weight limit allowed by your car seat's manufacturer. Remember, your children are the most precious cargo when driving. Keep us safe and buckle us in. We depend on you. Thank you. Jose and Pedro were born on the very same day. Jose liked to play sports. Pedro liked to play video games. Jose's favorite word was pass. Pass me the ball. Pedro's favorite word was pass too. Pass me the rice. Jose is retired and has both time and energy. His life is just beginning. Pedro has diabetes, hypertension, and gout. His life could soon end. Eat less, play more, live longer. Brought to you by PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking. Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Take your turn at the most unique restaurant on Saipan. Daily lunch specials are just $9.99 and come with super salad. Happy hour starts at 5 o'clock. And dinner features spectacular sunsets and great food at reasonable prices. $3.60 can be chartered for parties, events, birthdays, and weddings. Make it special. Make it $3.60. The best food and view all the way around. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Tonight, a special segment produced in cooperation with the public school system, preventing teen pregnancy. Let's take a look. Teenagers in the middle schools 
becoming parents. So um, we have had as young as 12 years old. I was a sophomore in Mount Carmel when I found out that I was pregnant. Crystal Pangolinan manages the family planning program for public health. One of their goals is to prevent teenage pregnancy. In this program, we offer services such as birth control methods and choices, um, counseling, STD screening, um, preventative health screenings. We also do um, preconception care. These services can help teens make better decisions, and her personal experiences helped her in her own home. I tell her, I know you might not be doing anything yet, but I need you to be ready so that you can prevent an unintended pregnancy. You can prevent, you know, contracting an STI. Education plays a critical role. Melissa San Nicholas is the Personal Responsibility Program Director. She helps with curriculum and after school programs. Well, in the sixth grade, we have uh, Making a Difference curriculum. And then in the seventh grade, we have Making Proud Choices. And in high school uh, health classes, we have Be Proud, Be Responsible. A lot of the discussion is on abstinence, being 100% most effective. Um, and then when they get into um, seventh grade and high school, because from our data we see that uh, we have uh, like 40 some percent that are um, sharing in the youth risk behavior survey that um, they are sexually active. So we want to help support that group too. And so we teach them also on how to be safe, um, talking about protection, contraceptives, but still uh, continuously uh, focusing in on abstinence being the most effective way to protect from pregnancy and HIV STI. Tenta Tenorio is the program manager for the HIV STD prevention program at CHCC. Our program uh, provides counseling, um, testing for HIV, STD, condom availability um, to all populations that would like to access our care. So gonorrhea and chlamydia uh, both are the most common bacterial infections. Um, in 2019, 56 percent of our chlamydia cases were within the age group of 15 to 24 and uh, for gonorrhea it's 52 percent. So it's, it's higher within that age group. Untreated STDs can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease, it can lead to infertility and other health complications. Um, therefore, the sooner we detect and the sooner we test is the ideal. What are some of the questions that young people have? They ask, you know, do I need to bring my parents? Um, how is, do I have to pay for pills or, you know, whatever method I would choose, do I have to pay for it? Um, how often would I need to come back? It's part of our Title 10 policy, our program policy. So you do not need parental consent regardless of the age. But as part of our legislative mandate, again, we do highly encourage that they do speak with their parents, but we understand culturally, sometimes they might say, this is just not something you talk about at home, but I really would like to receive this service because I want, I'm not ready to have a baby, but you know, I am in a relationship or you know, I feel like I, I might be in a situation where I might think I am ready. So we, we do let the patient know. And then even at the schools, we let them know that, you know, it's really important to talk to your parents. They are your first teachers. They are the best people to turn to, but we understand if they say we cannot talk to our parents, but I really do need this service for my health. We do have a CNMI Public Law 12-75 that allows for minors to avail of our services without parental consent. We always, always encourage our minors to find a trusted adult to speak with, um, you know, regarding their sexual health or any questions they may have, but if that is not available for them, we do have this public law that allows for them to avail of these services without parental consent. Classes offered through the public school system are for one period per day for four weeks. Consent forms are sent home. I think the most um, sensitive part is the contraceptive lessons. But, you know, um, in order for us to really help our students understand that, yeah, it sounds uncomfortable, but once you um, see how it is to use it and you talk about it, the comfort level will get much better. And so I think with the, I think we've been doing this for eight or nine years through our prep grant now, a lot of our students are really applying it, not only 
for teen pregnancy prevention, but with a lot of other areas. Educators say parental involvement is key. Sometimes we have parents that share, I don't know how to talk to my kids about this. I grew up and my parents never talked to me about this. So we, we try to give them tips and new strategies on the best uh, ways to talk to their kids or how to start these conversations. It doesn't have to be full on uh, the discussions on sexual health, but as you gradually um, talk about various topics, you can, you can add that in uh, eventually. But the startup of just having open discussions is so essential. Uh, and then your, your kid will see that you are a person that they can talk to and, and then eventually they, they can be able to talk to you about, about what's happening to their bodies, the changes that's happening as, as they grow older and um, maybe relationships that they're having. For sexual education, you know, it should occur at least in regards to birth control methods and counseling. I feel like it is appropriate to occur um, at, at the beginning of middle school but overall sexual education should start as low as early elementary. Just letting, the, just letting the students know, you know, your body is your body. No one should coerce you into doing anything. If something does happen, there is someone you can turn to. So how's it working? Since we have started, our teen pregnancy rate has been declining uh, as much as 50%. And um, with the help of our partners from um, the hospital, uh, even with DYS and many of the other agencies, I think that has helped us greatly to be successful in what we do. We see that there has been a decrease in the last 10 years, a big decrease. Um, as of last year, of the total live births, 5% of them were to teenage mothers, ages 15 to 19. Um, so I would say a decade ago, you know, we had rates that were well over 10%. Yeah, so I would say that a lot of the decrease would have to be factors from the education that the public school system and some of the private schools that they're providing. And also um, our partnerships, CHCC, we have strong partnerships with the public school system as well in providing that education and letting the students know where they can get the services. We are open Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4.30. And now we're also open on Saturday as well, 7.30 to 4.30. But Saturday will only be by appointment. So they can call the hospital number, extension 6017, to make an appointment. But um, we've done that just to kind of open up our doors more to those who have struggles with getting to the clinic on Monday to Friday. Well, that's good information. Thank you. All right, coming up in the KSPN2 Sports Report, the NMI is looking forward to competing in the Marshall Islands for the very first time. Thank you for being here with us finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feels so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away by the change you see, you see me. And I feel alright, dance alright, put a little flavor in my life. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Welcome to the Better together. Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live.
Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Gold's Gym. And today we're gonna go over the cable lat pull down. Now what we wanna remember with machine-based exercises, there's really no right or wrong way of doing it. There's multiple ways of executing the exercise. What you'll often see is lifters executing the exercise in this fashion. And instead of working the muscles of your upper back, you're just irritating the shoulder joint, which is what you don't want. All right, let's clean that up a little bit. Let's sit upright a little bit more. Okay, as you get a full stretch, bring it down with your elbows coming in. So in general, as you set up this way, you're going to be feeling majority of the impulse right here, which is your lats. Okay. He's getting a full stretch and he's getting a full squeeze in the bottom. Did you know CNMI's coral reefs and seagrass ecosystems are worth about $115 million a year? Coral reefs alone are valued over $100 million a year. All the more reason these precious ecosystems must continue to be protected. Coral reefs are important to the people of the CNMI because they provide traditional and subsistence uses, production of commercial food products, recreational opportunities for a healthy tourist economy, and physical protection from storms. Do not break or collect coral to take home with you. We need them. Corals are living animals, and it takes decades to create reef structures. Planting trees, grass, and shrubs on bare soil helps prevent sediment from entering our oceans. Trees also help fight climate change. Use a rain barrel and collect water from roofs, yards, and paved surfaces. You can help keep storm water on your property and pollutants out of waterways by building a rain garden. The ocean floor isn't a dance floor. Stepping on corals can break them. Maintain buoyancy when snorkeling or diving. Nutrients from excess fertilizer increases algae growth that blocks sunlight to corals. Coral reefs need clean, clear water to survive. Help keep our beaches litter-free. Always take out your own trash and a little bit more. Anchor in sandy areas away from coral and seagrass or use mooring buoys so the anchor and chain do not drag on nearby corals. Reduce, reuse, rethink, repair, refuse, recycle. Do not feed the fish. Do not take or step on coral. Do not collect shells. Do not fish. Help with local tree planting community events local beach cleanups and get involved in protecting your watershed. Participate in training or education programs that focus on reef ecology. You can make a difference. Please contact Nina to get involved in community conservation. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Sue Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Point of sports fans. Buenas sports fans, tonight a lesson from local sports history 101. Something you may not have known but will now. When the Micronesian Games was reorganized in 1990, the idea was to rotate the hosting of the games among the islands so more people could see and enjoy them. They've been held on Guam, Saipan, Palau, Yap, and Pompeii. Chuuk, Koh Rai, and the Marshall Islands have never hosted them. Chuuk and Koh Rai have never requested hosting them, but the Marshalls did, and they got them for 2022. Did you know in my covering sports here for 27 years, the CNMI never sent a team to play in the Marshalls? So when Micro Games executive Joey Miranda III presented his status report at the Namasa meeting last week, NMI Sports Federation's got a close-up look at the state of a newly constructed track and field. The next slide is a copy of the area where they are currently, if not completed the dredging 
Uh, this is where the athletic sequence is be held at. Not in the, not in the ocean, but um, they are working on dredging the area. Um, they should be completed by end of next year, at the latest February of 2022. The basketball court in Majuro, a work in progress being renovated now. Wrestling will be done at the beach. Beach wrestling, truly a Micronesian sport. Women's fast pitch and tennis, ready for action now. And spearfishing is too. Athletes will be housed at the College of the Marshall Islands. Here's a list of all the competitions. Athletics, basketball, beach volleyball, fashion, uh, fast pitch softball for women, lawn tennis, Micronesian all around, spearfishing, Swimming, table tennis, ball canoe, volleyball, both beach and indoor, weightlifting, and wrestling. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Go karts, off roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-Kart Track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com, hours 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. Today's high temperature, a very tolerable 81, the low 74 at my house, the humidity 79%. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, some more scattered showers here and there. Southeast winds, 15 to 20 miles an hour, high 86, the low 77, seas 5 to 7 feet. Sunrise, 622 in the morning, a low tide at 908, followed by high tide at 408, sunset at 544. And that is it for Monday. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you back here on Wednesday.